part of it. Uh, actually, if you look further in the media, there also are serious articles on Bush's messianic uh, vision to bring democracy to the Middle East. Uh, here's one from the Wall Street Journal a couple days ago by a very good correspondent, very knowledgeable correspondent, Carla Ann Robbins, and it's about uh, Mr. Negroponte. So just to uh, counter what uh, Amy was saying about the media, they do report things about him. If you go to the right journals, like the Wall Street Journal, where they have a trustworthy audience, and they can kind of tell people things that you might not read elsewhere. Uh, the subheading, it says, Negroponte has tricky mission. And then the subheading is modern proconsul. Okay? And it begins by saying that as the ambassador to Honduras in the 80s, uh, Negroponte was known as the proconsul, a title given to powerful administrators in colonial times. And now he's been chosen to take up that same role uh, in Iraq, assuming there's one problem, assuming that the Pentagon is willing to cede its control. So the big question then is uh, whether the Pentagon will control Iraq after we transfer full sovereignty to them, or whether the proconsul, the modern proconsul, will uh, uh, run Iraq the way he ran Honduras. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but a day or two after uh, uh, Negroponte's uh, appointment was announced, uh, the government of Honduras withdrew its forces from Iraq. Uh, not many, you know, a couple of dozen, I guess, but it uh, might have been a coincidence. Or maybe they remember something from what happened there, uh, the kinds of things that Amy was telling you about. Uh, he did have a job. Uh, he had quite an embassy there, not the size of the one he's going to be running in uh, Iraq, but in Honduras, which, as you know, is a kind of centerpiece of world power. He had a huge embassy uh, with a 1,000 people. Uh, yeah, that's, sorry, that's, uh, he had a huge embassy. He ran one of the biggest embassies in the country, in the world, and he also had the biggest CIA station in the world, in Honduras. Uh, obviously terribly important place for the CIA to concentrate. Uh, and he had two jobs there, the article explains. One was to ensure that uh, Congress didn't get upset about the fact that the Honduran security forces were carrying out uh, uh, tortures and massacres. It's famous Battalion 316 that Amy was talking about. He had to deny those so that the uh, aid, military aid would keep coming. Uh, for him to be able to carry out his major task, uh, which was, of course, supervising the uh, uh, Contra camps in Honduras from which the CIA mercenary army was uh, attacking Nicaragua. Uh, not a small affair. The uh, uh, death toll in Nicaragua from the U.S. terrorist war based in Honduras uh, per capita uh, relative to population uh, would be the same as about two and a half million dead in the United States, uh, which turns out to be higher than the total number of American deaths in all wars in U.S. history, including the Civil War. So from the Nicaraguan point of view, this was not a small event. Uh, it did lead to uh, establishing democracy uh, with a gun at their heads uh, after Bush warned them that this is going to go on unless they vote for our candidate. This is Bush number one. Uh, Nicaraguans voted for the U.S. candidate, uh, were rewarded for that by, uh, there was tremendous applause in the United States and New York Times had big headlines uh, saying uh, Americans uh, united in joy, kind of like North Koreans. Americans united in joy at the victory for U.S. fair play. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, since then, uh, since the U.S. took it over again, uh, Nicaragua's declined to the second poorest country in the hemisphere after Haiti. Again, by accident, Haiti happens to be the main target of U.S. military intervention in the 20th century. Nicaragua's second, uh, but that's just another coincidence. Uh, about 60% of uh, Nicaraguan children under two uh, are now suffering from... Uh, severe anemia from malnutrition, meaning probable permanent brain damage. About half the active labor force is 
out of the country because there's no way to survive there. Uh, but it is regularly described in the Wall Street Journal, too, as an economic miracle where you can buy anything you want, which is true. There are 24-hour uh, you know, malls open for people who can afford it. Uh, and then you can buy computers and plenty of great, uh, great place for uh, 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 retired Americans to go. They can live very cheaply in wonderful mansions and so on. But for children uh, under two, uh, the prospects are permanent brain damage. Uh, and that's what we call a victory for democracy. Uh, so that tells you something about the Bush's messianic vision to bring democracy to Iraq uh, using the same uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, official. Uh, and uh, we can, don't have to go on about the kind of democracy that he brought to Honduras or that uh, the present incumbents in their Reaganite phase uh, brought to the rest of Central America. But that we're supposed to forget about. Uh, actually, I didn't quite tell the truth when I said I couldn't find any comment uh, after the president's visionary speech uh, questioning whether the goal was to bring democracy uh, to Iraq. Actually, I did find one. Uh, there was a column in the Washington Post by good correspondent Walter Pincus a couple of days after the president's speech, uh, which reported a poll in Baghdad. Uh, and the poll in Baghdad, uh, uh, if you read through the column, asked people uh, to say in their own words why they thought the United States invaded Iraq. Uh, and there were some who agreed with unanimous US commentary after the president announced his vision. There were some in Baghdad who said that they thought the goal was to bring democracy to Iraq, one uh, percent. Uh, so <laughs> there was a comment saying not everybody agrees. Uh, Five percent thought that the goal was uh, to help Iraqis. Uh, the rest uh, believed something that we're not allowed to say here. Uh, you can't find it discussed or you know, commented on or anything. But the rest of them say, well, the goal was to take control of Iraq's resources uh, and to reorganize, uh, use control of Iraq to reorganize the Middle East uh, in the interest, in the general interest of the United States. Uh, of all the reasons that have been offered for the war, that's one I've never seen discussed. Or if it is mentioned, it said, well, you know, some lunatics like Osama bin Laden may believe this, or maybe Amy Goodman believes it, but uh, nobody <laughs> sensible, except for almost everybody in Baghdad. Uh, and it's not unusual for uh, people at the wrong end of the club to have a more accurate vision of the world than those who are wielding the club in many situations. Actually, the Iraqi responses, if you look, were more sophisticated than I just indicated. Uh, One percent said the American goal was to bring democracy to Iraq, but 50 percent said the U.S. wants democracy in Iraq. Okay. Sounds like a contradiction. It isn't. If you read the whole statement, they said half of them said, that, yes, the United States wants Iraq, uh, democracy in Iraq, uh, but it will not permit Iraqis to uh, determine their own future uh, without U.S. influence. That means the proconsul is going to determine what happens. So democracy will be great uh, as long as you do what we say as a condition on democracy. Again, they understand our, us better than we choose to understand ourselves. Now, that is uh, the history, not just the United States, but elsewhere. Uh, well, the, uh, uh, Honduras was not the only country that uh, decided to pull out troops. As you, of course, know, uh, this, uh, Spain had a vote in March where the population uh, voted out the government that had gone to war over the objection of maybe 90 percent of the population and was greatly praised here by those who are carrying out the uh, messianic uh, mission to bring democracy, uh, was greatly praised for having demonstrated its democratic credentials by following orders from Crawford, Texas instead of uh, 90 percent of the population. That was much more general, in fact. Uh, but Spain did vote them out of office last March and uh, voted in a government which uh, announced that its uh, uh, electoral program was that it would uh, withdraw the 
troops from um, Iraq unless they were under UN supervision. And that led to a lot of commentary here, a lot of condemnation of the, the Spanish as uh, weak and uh, appeasing terrorism and all sorts of terrible things. Uh, one comment that I didn't notice uh, was that the Spanish voters uh, voted for what is pretty much the position of about 70% of Americans. Uh, last December, in the most in-depth poll yet taken, 70% of Americans uh, said, as in fact they've been saying since April, uh, that the, the UN ought to take the lead uh, in uh, civil order control in Iraq, in economic reconstruction, and in working with Iraqis to arrange a transfer of full sovereignty, which is pretty much what the Spanish voters voted for. Uh, so they voted for what 70% of Americans believe, uh, but there's a difference between Spain and America, and it's a very important difference. Uh, one difference is that in Spain, people know what public opinion is. In the United States, very few people know what public opinion is. I mean, if you go to the right websites and you, know, you read the uh, studies by the University of Maryland the Polling Institute, you can find these things out. But very few people know here. The people who answered that question and said, yeah, this is what we think, the UN ought to play the primary role in all these domains and the US ought to be a part of some multilateral uh, coalition, maybe under UN supervision. Very few of those people know that they're expressing the majority view in the United States, large majority view. A second uh, distinction is that in Spain, uh, you can vote for your, on your opinions. Uh, here you can't. Uh, like that issue is certainly not going to come up in the campaign. Uh, the position that 70% of Americans want and that the Spanish voters voted for is not an issue in our campaign. And this is true of issue after issue, internationally, domestically, all sorts of things. So just take the major domestic issue in the United States. It's pretty well agreed that the major domestic problem that the United States faces, and a serious one, uh, is exploding health care costs. Uh, the U.S. health care system is far and away the most uh, inefficient in the industrial world, uh, has costs way beyond any other country, and the outcomes are relatively poor down the low end of uh, industrial societies. And every health professional knows the reason for this. Uh, it's a privatized system, uh, which means uh, massive administrative costs, uh, lots of filling out paperwork, uh, um, you know, supervision, detailed supervision over what doctors are allowed to do, uh, huge drug costs uh, up to maybe 10 times as high as, uh, uh, say, Australia. Uh, just to give you some personal examples, we just came back from Greece, uh, where my wife had to get some, uh, you know, needed some drug. It turned out the drug she got uh, caught, was the same one she gets uses here, except it was one-third the price. And the uh, pharmacists and friends there told us we ought to really stock up on drugs uh, because everything is a fraction of the price of what it is here. Uh, same drugs, same company. They make huge profits in Greece, but they can make bigger profits here. Uh, and for all these reasons, the U.S. system is extremely inefficient. Uh, also, just the bureaucratization. Uh, my wife had to fill a prescription from uh, the MIT uh, health care program today, in fact. I spent about an hour on the phone with the insurance company trying to get them to fill the prescription as the doctor prescribed it. Uh, it turned out that uh, he had prescribed, I don't know, I'm kind of making up the facts, uh, three pills a week or something. And the only thing they could do was either two pills a week or four pills a week. Now, that's what the rule was. So they couldn't give her the prescription. She finally got the doctor to call. He spent half an hour arguing with them over the phone. Uh, she couldn't do it, so now she's going to figure out how to cut the pills in half or something. Uh, but all of those things add up. Um, they add up to huge expenses. And these are in inherent parts of a, uh, uh, a mostly privatized health care system, which is uh, highly bureaucratic, extremely inefficient, and so on. Well, how do American people feel about this? Actually, there are very few polls about it. I think the polling agencies don't want to know the answer, but there are some. Uh, there were, for example, one in the Washington Post uh, just a couple of months ago uh, where it turned out that about 80% of the population 
uh, are in favor of some form of national health care system of the kind that every other country has, uh, even if it meant uh, kept keeping taxes high, which incidentally it wouldn't. It would lower taxes because it would be so much more efficient. Uh, well, that, and that's pretty consistent. That goes back a long 